Hello, this is uh, Jim for the Monopoly Project, and we're doing uh, one of our floating book reviews. We're here on the uh, Monopoly Project yacht. Every uh, successful real estate uh, entrepreneur has a yacht, and uh, unfortunately, it's a Bikini Girls Day off, so it's just me. But we're cruising on Val Vista Lakes. It's uh, Thursday afternoon. It's about it's still about 101 degrees, um, and we are here to review three books, um, and they are the Patriots. Fate by Al Alaric Bond, Stephen Saylor's book on ancient Roman history, Dominus, and finally uh, Edward Slingerhand's book on drunk, on why humans continue to get intoxicated even though there's so many deleterious effects. And so we're going to go through those books. Um, I'm still recovering from my uh, toe injury when I broke two toes on by dropping a weight on them. We're almost at the point of amputation, um, but fortunately God saved me and it looks like the toes are gonna be okay, but I'm gonna be off my, on my feet, I'm off the crutches, but I'm gonna be uh, not working out or anything like, thing like that for at least uh, two months. In any case, let's get started with the Okay, Jim, I'm back from the uh, family phone call. We're on to our second book, Dominus by uh, Steve Saylor. And uh, again, like I said before, you can see the uh, notes are on the website. Um, and I'm going to be reading from them, hopefully adding a little extra inform information. Um, but anyway, so this is 496 pages hardcover. It was published in uh, this year, 2021. Um, I found this book. I was doing research. Uh, Pastor Jeff had given me the book on the rise of Christianity. And I did a book review on that. It was a scholarly study of how Christians went from, you know, just the start to you know, in, in 30 AD when Jesus was crucified, you know, 300 years later, around 300, 320, they became the official state religion of the uh, of, of Rome and how that happened numbers-wise and such. And uh, in, so that's how I came to this book because uh, this book actually uses that as a subplot, sub-theme of the device. Um, Anyway, I, I'm familiar with Steve Saylor. He, he wrote a book, a series of books called Sub Rosa, which was a, again a fictionalization of history where a guy in ancient Rome is a de detective, even though they didn't have detectives in those days as such. But he goes around meeting all the important people and participating in all the uh, famous events um, during the transition from when Rome went from a republic with Caesar and his predecessors and then the Civil War where it becomes an empire and Augustus takes over as emperor. But here he recounts the history of Rome from around 160 AD when Marcus Aurelius, a famous emperor, was ruling up until Constantine in around 300, 325, who actually, depending on which historical sources you read, was one of the Key element, the key drivers of making Christianity the state religion of Rome. Um, so the plot device here is he he uh, creates a fictional old Roman family that goes back to the uh, the days even before Rome was founded by Romulus and Remus, and they're the Paneri family, and they're artists, and they're sculptors, and they're also senators. And so between building stuff for the state for the empire and being senators, they have access to the emperors, and by this device, they play a role in, in it. And so there's a rationale why they're able to go talk to the emperor and do all these things. But again, Sailor fictionizes real history by adding characters who participate in the actions, and he also uses that as a device to, uh, um, to provide side comments and, and even some motivations of, of, of uh, events where we don't quite understand what happened because the historical record is thin. We're going under the uh, Val Vista Bridge here onto the South Lake and I'm having trouble reading my notes. Um, anyway, this is the end of a three-part series. Uh, the series starts at the beginning of the, the Caesar Augustus time that I mentioned. The first one's called um, Roma, the Second's Empire, and now we're at Dominus. Um, so it, it covers 300 years of Roman history. Um, Constantine does make the Christianity the state religion, um, and he actually forced all the Christian leaders to get together and agree in doctrine and beliefs at the First Council of Nicaea, 
which led to the Nicene Creed, which is a creed that we Christians still repeat now, 1700 years later, which summarizes all the beliefs. It was, it was also um, an attempt to drive out heresies, various heresies of people claiming different things about who Jesus was and what it meant and, and, and all of these theology things. Um, but uh, Constantine did play the key role in forcing them all together and actually to agree and write all this stuff down. So that, that part is too is true too also. He also, at the end of his reign, he started building Constantinople, which was a new city in the east, east of Rome. It's now site where Istanbul, Turkey is. But he, he in this book, he drafts the Paneri, the family, to accompany him. Um, and hopefully uh, that'll be lead to more books, to more follow-up books, because I do really enjoy these books. Um, I, I like this plot device of um, putting fictional characters in history because it makes the history interesting, uh, especially for the historical parts where the record is thin or non-existent. Uh, his account of the, um, I forgot to mention, he, he accounts. Constantine at one point in his reign had his oldest son and his wife killed two or three days apart. And it's never clear why he did it. There was a lot of speculation. Um, so he, he makes up a motivation for that. And he also makes up a motivation for the quote rain, the rain miracle, where the Roman attacking force was saved by by a Rome by a by a sudden downpour of rain, which they were um, dying of thirst, and they get water, and their enemies get get uh, swept away by the rain. And so, um, in the back of the book, he actually he in four or five pages he summarizes his historical sources and uh, what where he in, quote invented um, material and so if you want to if you want to read the book which I recommend uh, you might want to read that four or five pages first because it does give some context about what is quote true and what he's uh, speculating or inventing um, one of the interesting things about the book is a uh, sailor Steve Saylor is openly gay and the book does have an homoerotic subcurrent but that's in keep in keeping with the whole ancient Rome and Greek all had a erotic uh, undercurrent or more than undercurrent uh, reality in life. So uh, it, it it's there, but it's just part of a bigger thing. And as an interesting aside, um, the title Dominus means master, and it would be typically a way a slave would address his master. But eventually, this form of address. Uh, uh, refers to any, but you refer to anybody well above you in the social rank. So when the senators, even though they're senators, go see the emperor, they call him Dominus or her Domina, uh, because uh, you know in those days people weren't quite as familiar as we are these days. Um, he he doesn't. Sailor does an excellent job of weaving the rise of Christianity's story without making it obvious. You know, it, it, it's just part of the plot. You know, the the Paneri, the family, this fictional family that he created, they have their own um, good luck charm of fascium, uh, which goes back to the days of the founding of Rome by Romulus and Remus. Um, and that, that actually be a good name for a kid's cartoon show while I think about it. But the fascium is a winged penis. So, that, again, that goes back to my earlier comment that there's a lot of erotic content in these books. Most of it very subdued and uh, uh, hints and asides. But anyway, I did have, the, the other thing I really liked about this particular book is he, 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 um, he weaves the famous physician Galen through the early part of the book. Galen was a physician, uh, I think around 100, when uh, Marcus Aurelius there, 160, so 160 to 200. And he, he did do a lot to advance medicine. He did a lot of things that were wrong because for one thing, he didn't have access to uh, cutting people up because that was illegal under Roman law. So he would cut up animals and try and uh, draw equivalences, just like we do now, using animals as surrogates. But anyway, he, he does a really good job of weaving Galen in the story. It's, it's just a, one example of how well he does this. Um, so I, I, I think I read the two previous chapters, um, the two, two previous books, Roman Empire, but I may go back and reread them again. It, it, his writing is a pleasant diversion into another world, and you feel part of the family, and you feel um, 
you know you know what's going to happen because we know what happens with you know Marcus Aurelius and his sons and you know all the emperors but still it's it's fun to have a sideline seat and an inside seat where you actually know uh, why he killed his oldest son and his wife um, even though it's probably not true so in any case I, I hardly recommend the book it's a great book and Staler's a great writer you know if you're interested in Ro Roman fiction fictional of the Empire you know his Sub Rosa series is, is absolutely great um, so in any case uh, another recommended book from the Monopoly Project uh, we're going to go on to our next book I'll take a break here and come back and you can see the Sun is setting over Val Vista Lakes and so I have a little light left for us. We'll see you in a, in a few minutes.